Dear Father in Heaven, I pray that this Q&A session will glorify and honor you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How can Christian apologetics deepen our faith in Christianity? Well, thank you very much for the question. Because this question strikes at the heart of why we are doing this apologetics course and why we have this follow-up question and answers. So thank you once again for this question. I'd like to answer this in different ways and I want to come from different approach and uh, bear with me right at the end, you will get your answer. Why Christian apologetics would deepen your understanding of Christianity as well as it will sustain our spiritual growth right up to the very end. So bear with me. Well, I'll try and answer it this way. You know, when you ask a question to a, a, a new Christian or Christians and ask them, why have you accepted Christ? Most of the time they would say the reason why they accepted Christ is because how God has changed their lives. Not because they believe that the Bible in itself is independently true. See, most do not see the need to understand the historicity of the Bible, the inerrancy of the Bible, the verifiability of the Bible. Most would consider this as an unnecessary um, information in their Christian journey. In short, personal experiences and personal feelings and that God had changed their lives would have been the major reason why they believe in Christ, not because the independent truthfulness of the Bible. Now, can you see a problem here? Let me highlight the problem here. See, the problem is personal feelings and personal experiences change, and they may not last. And I'll explain, I'll explain why. So personal feelings are unreliable as an anchor to believe what you believe. See, Satan knows this. He has a plan to dilute our faith because he knows without faith, we're not going to last the distance, especially at the end times. So in these last days, Satan is busy working on challenging our faith by influencing our feelings. See, the secular world is constantly challenging the credibility of the Bible. There is an orchestrated movement by the atheists to control schools, universities, corporations, and governments to erode our confidence in the biblical worldview. And guess what? They are winning. They target the historicity of the Bible. See, when Christians are subject to such well-planned bombardment all their lives, their faith may start to crack if it is not grounded in or in some external immutable standard, if their faith was grounded in personal feelings and experiences. See, without this independent and external anchor of the truthfulness of the biblical worldview, our faith will soon crack given such constant and well-planned bombardment. Over time, Faith and Christians will start to wonder if their personal experiences is the result of social pressure rather than a true divine experience. See, many may start to even challenge the relevance of the Bible in today's high-tech world. You talk to young people and you will realize what I mean. Have you ever wondered why so many people, so many young people particularly, are leaving the faith? Think about it. You know, this secular world of ours, there is this concerted effort to undermine God's redemptive plans. Christians are being challenged everywhere they go. This growing militaristic, atheistic movement has a clear agenda, and that is to destroy the credibility of our only source of absolute truth, which is the Bible. Sadly, sadly, most Christians would remain silent when they are challenged in this area. And you know why? Perhaps many are ignorant about Christian apologetics. So, Christian apologetics, in essence, is a system to first fully understand the truthfulness of the Bible, and from a full-scale challenge 
and 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 to defend the truthfulness of this Bible from any full scale challenge by the current well planned atheistic movement. So I repeat, Christian apologetics in essence is a system to first fully understand the truthfulness of the Bible and how to defend this truthfulness. You know, when you truly understand the credibility, the inerrancy, inerrancy and the verifiability of the Bible, this can only reinforce your personal experience of Christianity because your faith then is further deepened by an independent by independently knowing the truthfulness of the Bible. There is an independent standard which you can anchor your personal experience on, in other words. You see, having an external and independent and non-changing anchor to your personal experience of Christianity is crucial in our spiritual journey, particularly during the end times and particularly in the environment where we're being challenged consistently. Many Christians, I would also sad to say, hang their faith on the blessings they receive from being a Christian. Now, don't get me wrong, such experiences are very powerful reasons to believe, to believing in Christianity. I'm not diluting that at all. But what I'm saying is, in itself, this experience in itself is not enough to sustain our spiritual journey. You look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 and 38. Here, the author is asking us to endure through faith till the end. To do that, we need more than this gratefulness of receiving blessing from our Lord. You see, there will be times when we do not see nor feel his blessings. And given this, many Christians are existing in a nominal way. Nominal Christians, stagnating, not growing in the faith, not just staying stagnant as Christians, just doing things as Christians ought to do every weekend. This is when you need to rely on the truth, the external anchor to sustain our faith. This external anchor is knowing the truthfulness of the Bible and knowing that regardless of your current situation, the truthfulness of the Bible will not change. Therefore, studying and knowing and internalizing Christian apologetics gives you this anchor of hope, especially during the times when you do not particularly feel too hopeful or particularly feel you're being blessed, because there will be times when you don't feel that. And instead of keeping quiet, and when you're being challenged and let skeptics run all over you, you can respond with information, with facts, with confidence, with tools, with tactics, but in a kind, encouraging, graceful and loving manner. This is what commanded by the, our God in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. So I hope you can see why Christian knowing and learning about Christian apologetics will deepen and anchor your faith even more, particularly at the end times. I hope this answers your question. And thank you for the question once again. God bless. Once again, thank you for your questions and I pray that you have gained something from this session. Just to remind you, please continue to send your questions in via the comments below. Thank you. God bless.